Hello everyone. I am clinical medical geneticist Dr. Sezin Canbek. Today I am with two brilliant scientists, Professor Dario Alessi and Professor um, Miratul Mukit, who work in MRCPPU unit in University of Dundee, Scotland. They do great research here and they have lots of papers, research and they have lots of uh, awards and honors around the world. Uh, I've been with them um, in, during last one month in their lab, in their unit, and also we've, we've seen so many patients with uh, Miratul Mukit and Esther Samler, who also works in um, MRCPPU unit and Nine Wells Hospital as a neurologist and scientist. Uh, I'd like to thank, first of all, I'd like to thank them and uh, their lab members colli and colleagues uh, to giving this opportunity, opportunity f to me to be in, in their uh, department. I, uh, now I kindly invite them to talk about uh, Parkinson's disease and their valuable research on this subject. Dear Dario, as a director of MRCPPU unit, uh, what would you like to tell us about Parkinson's disease research? Okay, well first I'd like to start by uh, saying it's been a tremendous pleasure having you in the unit. <laughs> you know, our unit's always open for visitors, whether they want to come for one year, you know, one month, one week, one day. We're always delighted to, uh, to, to have guests from all over the world here to uh, you know, to discuss with us uh, research and to learn more about the work that's going on. So, uh, yeah, I suppose the one thing I would like to say is that we're starting, not just from our lab, but from the whole, the, the research of the whole community, to, to really understand the nuts and bolts of the biology that's relevant to Parkinson's disease. The pathways that, in which the signals move down, and elicit physiological effects and, and keep the dopamine producing cells healthy. And then we're also starting to understand how various disruptions that uh, might cause Parkinson's disease, for example, genetic effects or even environmental effects might impact these highways of communication and, and how this could uh, maybe over time lead to, to, to Parkinson's disease and um, I think we're starting to understand this in sufficient depth that we can really start working with clinicians and, and, and pharmaceutical companies to develop modulators of these pathways and uh, you know some of these ideas have already resulted in, in new potential treatments that are being tested in the clinic and we're particularly excited about the LARC2 kinase here that seems to be overactivated in people impacted with Parkinson's disease and uh, numerous companies including Denali and Biogen have developed uh, very potent drug-like molecules that target LARC2 and these are being tested in clinical trials and uh, yeah the, the best thing that ever happened to me in, in recent times was on the 18th of April when uh, Unfortunately, our colleague Esther Sam is not able to be here today, but she's running a clinical trial in our local hospital in Dundee. And uh, I, I got to see the first person in the UK participate in the LARC2 inhibitor trial where they took a tablet, you know, and then after that was like 20 years' work to get to this point. And, uh, you know, it was a special moment. So, you know, I'm optimistic. I think we're, we're on the pathway to, to where we can have better treatments. And uh, you know, but we can't relax. You know, there's still we don't know how high the mountain is ahead of us, mm -hmm. and we've just you know got to, if anything, intensify the effort of research as a whole community to 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 get to that point. Yeah, thank you, Daria. Thank you, uh, dear dear Murato, You uh, you are on the both sides. You also see patients in hospital, and you also do lots of research here. Uh, how you manage to balance both sides, and what would you tell? What would you like to tell us about your research here? 
Yes, so, so, th thank you, Susan. And again, I would like to add <coughs> my my. It's been our pleasure to have had you this this month, and uh, you brought a lot of energy and enthusiasm both to the lab, but also That's in nice. the clinic, seeing the patients. So thank you for for for, for spending some time with us. Um, I mean, from I guess my perspective of it is being as a clinician is that I've I've always been fascinated by. Uh, brain diseases. Uh, very, when I was uh, training as a medical student, I found this branch of medicine uh, fascinating, uh, but also very aware of the huge challenges in uh, this in this area of medicine. So, as a medical student, I was very aware that the origins of this of diseases like Parkinson's, particularly, were mysterious. Uh, the treatments were uh, not able to uh, affect the progression, but more symptoms. And I think because of that fascination, I think that's what, as a clinician scientist, drew me to do my research in this area. And I, and I still remember seeing my very first Parkinson's patient. It was in a lecture theatre in my medical school who was brought into the students to show uh, uh, the, the, the symptoms that patients get. And um, I, through my research career, have been very much focused on trying to understand more about the origins of this condition with the hope that this can translate to better ways to diagnose and treat. Um, I think that from the scientific point of view, I, 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 <coughs> uh, I do uh, agree with uh, Dario's comments about uh, understanding the nuts and bolts. I mean, I think that the genetic so this is something that happened during my early years of mm -hmm. training, is that the discovery of the genes that are linked to familiar forms of Parkinson's, I think, has been extremely vital to allow a whole field of research to uh, uh, arise, to focus now on how, how, which cellular pathways are going wrong in, in brain cells. And, uh, I think for me, the way that I look at it is that without the without those without you know the genes are very important, but the work that the type of work that we do here in Dundee the, in, in the MRC that really trying to understand the molecular mechanisms of how the mutation in the gene leads to uh, alterations in cellular pathways and ultimately to why dopamine uh, cells are are lost in patient Parkinson's is probably where we get the best ideas for diagnosis and treatments, direct treatments. Um, in our own work, we've been interested in genes, including the pink one kinase and the Parkin ubiquitin ligase. And this has suggested that the mitochondria of, of, of neurons is very important in maintaining their health. And if this is damaged, this leads to Parkinson's. Um, and I think this, has, has complemented the work of, of, of the Dario's work with this LARC2 kinase and its implication in similar uh, defects in trafficking and, and lysosomal uh, uh, dysfunction. And, and there's many similar parallels to how these cellular pathways are, are, are altered. I mean, for me, my, my focus is to continue because I think that we, we still don't have that treatment in the clinic for the patients. And so, as you've seen for the last few weeks, you know, we are yeah. prescribing medications. Some of them are recent medications, but they, they're still symptomatic. So, so I, I, I think that's what motivates me in the lab, is actually hopefully, hoping that our research will contribute to the wider field to come up with uh, something that can help, help patients ultimately, either diagnostically or, or in terms of slowing down the disease. And I think as a clinician scientist, I would say, um, yes, working on something that's directly relevant to people that you manage and, and look after, I think is very motivating and, uh, and, and inspiring as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Arato. Thank you, Daria. Thank you, Mirato. It's a great pleasure to be with you here. And I sincerely believe uh, that you are central figures in Parkinson research all the time. I would also thank all your lab members, colleagues, and postdocs, senior postdocs, and PhD students, and lab technicians, all the people I talk here. Uh, and I think you have such a great team here, well-focused and energetic. And thank you for everything. 
it was really great honor to be here with you and thank you for everything thank you everyone uh, we see you in next videos stay safe have a nice day bye okay, bye bye